Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sonam Aruna, Assistant Professor, LG Integrated MBA. Welcome you all to the fourth session of subject Banking and Insurance, Semester 9, Finance and Specialization of IMBA Curriculum. Today we are going to start with our Module 2. The Module 2 is divided into two parts. The first part discuss about the central bank and its role in the economy, whereas second part discuss about the relationship of customer and banker. Today we are going to start with the Reserve Bank of India. In this particular video session, we are going to discuss about the genesis, development and structure of RBI. Now, when we talk about the central bank, the concept of central banking is introduced by colonial government worldwide. The central bank occupy a pivotal position in the institutional fabric of an economy. The function of modern central bank are vastly different from what was expected from the earlier central bank. Now, when we talk about central bank, its function are basically divided into three categories. The first one is financial stability. The second one is price stability. And the third one is maintaining the flow of credit and liquidity in an economy. The RBI is all discharging these duties and play a very crucial role in the nation building process, particularly in the development of financial sector. Specifically, it is your banking and non-banking financial sector. Now have a look at the genesis of RBI. In 1926, the formation of Royal Commission on Indian Currency and Finance, which is also known as Hilton Young Commission. Now this commission suggested the establishment of Central Bank, which is to be called as RBI, whose separate existence was considered necessary. But this bill was dropped due to the differences of political. Now, in 1935, the formation of Indian Bank Inquiry Committee. Now, this committee creates a fresh bill which paused in 1934. And in 1934, RBI Act was passed. At that time, the main work of Central Bank is a note issuing authority. In January 1935, RBI inaugurated. When RBI was inaugurated, it was a private bank. In Jan 1949, after the freedom, RBI was nationalized on the basis of Transfer to Public Ownership Act 1949. And from that time onwards, RBI is a central bank wholly owned by the central government. Now have a look. When we talk about the development of RBI, we classified the RBI in three different parts. First phase is a foundation phase, which is from 1935 to 1950, when we are under the colonial government rule. The RBI Act is a private bank, as I already told you, and the main function of RBI in this time duration is a note issuing authority, and it also works as a debt manager for the government. The development phase of RBI started from 1951, and for a basis, we develop it from 1951 to 1990. In this particular phase, we all already facing with the planned economic system, so. We are working in a five-year plan economy. Other than the primary function, RBI focused on regulate and manage the foreign reserve in this particular duration. In this particular duration, RBI focused on the agricultural lending because our planning system is more focused toward the priority sector lending in this duration. The main two sequence of this time frame is the devaluation of currency in 1966 and the nationalization of private bank which happened in 1969 and 1980. The nationalization of private bank made them at the public bank. It means the banking sector is very important for any economy and Indian banking sector is mostly nationalized. So the RBI focuses on the structural development of banking sector. In 1991 onwards, India started its shifts toward the liberalization, privatization and globalization. This particular shift helped us to move towards the structural changes in banking sector as well as in RBI. I also focused here on the report of Narsimha Committee. The Narsimha Committee 1 and the Narsimha Committee 2 focused on the structural shift in the banking sector. It focused on the technological development in the banking sector as well as give the more functional autonomy to the banking sector. Now, have a look at the structure of RBI. So, as I already told you, RBI is a wholly owned by Government of India. The Central Board has primary authority for oversight the Reserve Bank. 
the reserve bank and the central board of director are classified into two part one are the official director and second is a non official director official director consists of governor and four deputy governor it is not compulsory that the governor must be a employee of rbi governor is appointed by the or nominated by the central government the four deputy governor are mostly the employees of rbi they are the promoted employees so the official board is consist of one governor and four deputy governor then we talk about non official board the non official board is divided among four director nominated by the central government and represent the four different local boards for the 10 executive director again nominated by the government of india and one government official nominated by the central government if you look at the structure most of the people either nominated by the government or the representative of the government thus you can say either the rbi is an autonomous institute most of the people sitting on the central board are the nominated person of government now have a look at the rbi made up so rbi made up is of 26 department and 27 regional offices two training center one is in chennai and second is in pune four research institute pune mumbai hyderabad and chennai and four different subsidiaries the first one is very important national housing bank the second one is nabard which is specifically made for the agriculture banking and control the rrb the third one is deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation and the fourth one is bhartiya reserve bank note mudran private limited which issue the currency in the country now in this particular session we discuss about all these factor in our next video session we will discuss about the function of rbi in detail thank you